Okay, uh, welcome to this uh, revision video for AQA uh, GCSE Chemistry uh, as well as uh, Science A. Uh, unit 1, this is Unit 1.2, uh, Limestone and Building Materials. Right then, so uh, a lot of this topic is about calcium carbonate. Look at the formula, CaCO3, one calcium atom joined to one carbon atom and three oxygen atoms. The uh, two most common forms of calcium carbonate are chalk and limestone. That picture there shows the white clusidova, famously made of chalk. Right then, the first important reaction we need to know about is thermal decomposition. As the name suggests, that's using heat to break down the substance. Uh, we have a single reactant which then decays into two products, calcium oxide, that's lime, and carbon dioxide gas. Here's uh, the reaction for that. As I said, a single reactant, calcium carbonate, reacts to produce two products, calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. That's the word equation. Let's have a look at a symbol equation. CaCO3, S for solid, reacts to produce calcium oxide, also a solid, and carbon dioxide gas. I can represent that visually as well. You can see the atoms there in calcium carbonate, single calcium atom, single carbon atom three red oxygen atoms. Look what happens at the end of the reaction. We've got a calcium atom joined to a single oxygen atom and the other two oxygen atoms are joined up to a black carbon atom. There we go. So thermal decomposition. Actually lots of carbonates decay in the same way. So magnesium carbonate whose formula is MgCO3 decays exactly the same pattern. Magnesium is a group 2 element just like calcium. Um, copper carbonate CuCO3, that will have the same pattern as will sodium carbonate. Although not all group 1 metals can be uh, thermally decomposed at temperatures reached by a Bunsen burner, uh, other elements like zinc, that will also decompose in exactly the same way to produce the oxide and carbon dioxide. Right then, so lime, remember, that's calcium oxide. That will react if you add water to it and will produce calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide, probably better known to you as lime water. So here's a symbol equation for that. CaO, calcium oxide, a solid, reacting with water, H2O, a liquid, to produce calcium hydroxide, Ca in brackets, OH2. So look carefully at that formula. The brackets with the two outside means there's two of everything inside the brackets. OH, that is the hydroxide ion. And calcium hydroxide is soluble, so that makes a solution an aqueous solution, hence the AQ in brackets. Calcium hydroxide is an alkali, so it'll turn universal indicator blue, and it can be used to neutralise acids. Right then, lime water is pretty useful stuff actually, you've probably used it in the classroom. Uh, calcium hydroxide reacts with carbon dioxide to make calcium carbonate and water. So calcium hydroxide, that's the CaOH2, carbon dioxide making carbon, calcium carbonate a solid. That's a, what we call a precipitate. The cloudiness you see when you uh, bubble carbon dioxide through lime water is actually tiny particles of uh, solid calcium carbonate which won't dissolve and in fact would settle out to the bottom if you left them to it. So those three reactions we've just seen actually form a kind of a cycle. If we start with a piece of calcium carbonate and heat it up we get uh, calcium oxide, that's your thermal decomposition, uh, to lime and if I add water to lime I get lime water, calcium hydroxide and of course finally if I react that calcium hydroxide with carbon dioxide I'm back to my calcium carbonate at the start so that's the so-called limestone cycle. Limestone is pretty useful stuff too uh, we've been using it for a long time for building materials so here's some uh, chunks of uh, limestone and that can be worked to make uh, nice facings for buildings. There's York Minster, lots of uh, older buildings famously made from limestone because uh, limestone is an abundant rock and can easily be worked to produce uh, nice looking uh, stone for buildings. But it's also a construction material. If you heat limestone with clay you make cement and 
cement itself, cornerstone of construction. If it's heated with sand, then that can be used to make mortar for sticking bricks together. Or if cement is heated with stone, sometimes called aggregate, then that's used to make concrete, another very important construction material. Right, final bit. Uh, metals reacting with acids. Calcium, the metal, reacts with hydrochloric acid to make calcium chloride and we get hydrogen gas as well. So whenever hydrochloric acid reacts we get a chloride. So because it's reacting with calcium it's calcium chloride and we also get hydrogen gas. So here's some uh, calcium metal. If I react that with hydrochloric acid I'd get a pretty vigorous reaction and lots of hydrogen gas. Let's look at a symbol equation. Ca calcium it's a solid reacting with hydrochloric acid a solution we get calcium chloride solution and hydrogen gas look closely at the formula you can see hydrochloric acid is a hydrogen ion joined to a chloride ion what's actually happening here is the calcium atom is pushing out the hydrogen and joining up with a chloride ion except of course if you look at the formula for calcium chloride CaCl2 you can see each calcium atom joins to two chloride ions so that means it reacts with two hydrochloric acid molecules so we need a big two in front there so we've got two chloride ions to make our calcium chloride and two hydrogen ions to make our hydrogen gas H2. In fact hydrochloric acid pretty reactive stuff reacts with lots of metals magnesium reacts in exactly the same way instead of this time it makes magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. You've probably done this in class. Fizzes away quite nicely to produce hydrogen gas to make its characteristic squeaky pop. And if we look at the symbol equation, exactly the same pattern as before. We need a big two in front of the HCl because we need two chloride ions and two hydrogen ions to make our MgCl2 and our H2 hydrogen gas. Another metal, zinc. Not quite as reactive as magnesium, but look at that, same pattern as before. We get the metal chloride, zinc chloride. So if you put some granules of zinc into hydrochloric acid, it would fizz away. Not dramatically, but it would definitely fizz to produce some hydrogen gas. And you'd see, you'd see the bubbles and you'd have a solution of zinc chloride, ZnCl2. To make this equation balance, look, we need that 2 in front again just as before, exactly the same pattern. Now then, not all metals will react with acids. Copper is not a very reactive metal. Any metal that is lower down than copper in the reactivity series will not react. So copper, silver, gold, none of those metals react with acids. So we couldn't write an equation for that. If you put some bits of copper into some hydrochloric acid, they would just sit there and nothing would happen. Hmm, right, so here we go. Quick summary then, we've looked at the thermal decomposition of carbonates, particularly the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate to calcium oxide and then calcium hydroxide, which is lime water, used for testing for carbon dioxide. Limestone is used to make some useful products. Uh, stone, the building material itself, mortar for sticking bricks together, concrete for making buildings with, and then finally we looked at the reactions of metals with acids. There we go. It's quite a short topic, this bit. Um, please feel free to watch this video again to review if you need to. Uh, learn those formulas and uh, good luck. Thank you very much.